Hey guys, this is Austin. This little chip is one of the most important new products that AMD has released in a very long time. This is the Ryzen 4000 series mobile chip, and with it, you get a full eight cores with solid graphics that can fit in a thin and light laptop. It is a very, very big deal. So obviously, AMD has been working on laptops for quite a while. However, for the most part, they've been fine, they've been usable, but in the last couple years they've started to turn around ever since Ryzen Mobile came out. Now with it you got really impressive graphics, and while the CPU and the power usage wasn't amazing, it was still very usable. However, now that we've hit the 4000 series, it looks like they're pretty much firing on all cylinders. So for context on all of this, over the last couple months I've been using the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, which does feature the latest 10th generation Intel Ice Lake processor. With it I get 4 cores as well as a pretty decent GPU, but with Ryzen Mobile, the idea is that the performance is going to be significantly better. In the same tiny chip and the same 15 watt power budget, you can go all the way up to 8 cores with even better graphics. Yes, my friends, it's a brave new world where AMD is not only making some of the best desktop processors, but they're right up there with laptops too. I mean, obviously, CES, we haven't had a chance to benchmark anything. All the laptops are behind a plastic case because they don't want me to get near them, but if this is anywhere close to what I think it should be, it is going to be really, really fun to try some of these laptops. The lineup is actually pretty straightforward and very similar to what you get on the desktop. So Ryzen 3 is available with four cores, kind of similar to what you got last generation. However, if you jump up to Ryzen 5, they get you six cores with and without hyper-threading, depending on which chip you go for. And then if you go up to Ryzen 7, you're getting eight cores. Again, eight cores by themselves or eight cores with 16 threads on the very high-end Ryzen 7 chip. Now that's actually what I've got right here. And the interesting thing here is that all of the Ryzen mobile chips are actually using the same eight core die. So everything you see going down to four, six, it's all going to fit in this tiny form factor. And there's a pretty wide range of the different kinds of TDPs that you'll find this at. So at 15 watts, you'll very much see it in some of these very thin and light laptops. But if you want to go up to a gaming laptop, such as the Zephyrus, which we took a look at a couple days ago, you're actually getting something which is much more in the 35, 45 watt range, which is very, very competitive with Intel. It's interesting that they're using the exact same chip across the board, but they're able to get such good scaling out of not only the Zen 2 cores inside, but also the fact that it is running on the seven nanometer process, that they can just do that. You know, eight cores and everything, that's fine. Don't worry about it. What's cool here is that you're not really losing a lot of clock speed either. Even with the top end Ryzen 7 4800U, it's still clocking in at 1.8 gigahertz base and 4.2 gigahertz boost. That's about what my current Ice Lake system is running at, except that of course this has eight cores instead of four. Now, it's not a complete match with the desktop version of Ryzen, so there is no PCI 4.0 on this, which isn't particularly relevant in the laptop space, as well as it does take advantage of integrated Vega graphics, not Navi. So it's a little bit behind the curve there, but by saying it's a little bit behind the curve, they're still claiming that it's about 30% faster than an equivalent Ice Lake system, and about 30% faster, I would guess, from that, based on the last generation of Ryzen Mobile. So what you're getting here is something which is not too far off from like a lower end dedicated GPU. Think like maybe like MX150, MX250, that kind of ballpark. Certainly this will be good enough to play some games like 1080p low, and you'll also have eight cores to do it at the exact same time. To do it, to, to game with, wait no, well I guess, you can game with all of it, but then you have like four extra cores to watch Austin Evans videos on a constant loop. Or stream. Or you could stream. No, but you should just watch Austin Evans videos on a constant loop. Really, that's what you need eight cores for. Please watch my videos. Now, if gaming is really your thing, you're probably going to want to jump up to the H-series processors in something like the Dell G5, as well as the ROG Zephyrus G14. Now, with this, it's basically the same chip. It's just running at a higher 45-watt TDP as opposed to 15 watts. And with that, you still get the eight cores, but you're able to essentially boost it significantly higher. So as opposed to base clocks on the U-series being like 1.8 gigahertz or so, you're up to, I think, 2.9 gigahertz. But what you're really going to find this with is that this chip is going to be paired with dedicated graphics, whether it be like a 1660 or an RTX 2060, or of course AMD also has their own dedicated GPUs. But the cool thing here is the gaming laptops on the AMD and the Intel side are about to be very, very competitive. I'm curious to see, AMD is talking a big game. They're talking about how this is going to be very much equivalent to like a Core i7 or even a Core i9 on the laptop side. And if that's the case, whoo, yeah. And also probably be cheaper too. 
So the Ryzen Mobile 4000 series will actually be going on sale pretty quickly. So laptops should start shipping somewhere in the next two to three months or so. And I am really excited to give them a try. So obviously the last year or so has been a very, very huge win for AMD on the desktop side. And with the mobile side, I feel like they're poised for maybe not quite that same slam dunk because Intel does have a lot of advantages in the power side as well as optimization. But if AMD can get close, if they can get that much better, I think it's going to be a really interesting year for laptops. I mean, this is it's a lot of power for a very thin, very small computer. I'm very excited. Now, there actually is a lot more to talk about, and something that I think very much got overshadowed is the brand new AMD Athlon 3000 series. So if you look at the lower end of laptops, you're going to see a lot of AMD like A12 and A10 processors. And I'm going to be frank, they suck. They're very slow, and they're really not usable for a modern system in 2020. Well, thankfully, Ryzen and therefore an extension Athlon has come down to that price level. So there are a couple of new chips. So there's Athlon Silver and Athlon Gold, in case you're curious about who they're targeting here. Essentially, these are very similar to the last generation Ryzen chips. So they're 12, 14 nanometer, couldn't quite get a completely clear answer on that. But essentially, you're getting a couple of Zen cores, either with or without hyper-threading, some level of Vega graphics. But generally speaking, this will be a much, much more usable system at that two, three, four hundred dollar price point. I can't imagine a more different thing to move on to than the brand new AMD Threadripper 3990X. So while the Athlon is going into those incredibly cheap systems, this is a 64 core processor. I'm just gonna pause for a second. 60 four cores with hyper-threading for the low, low price of $3,990. <clears throat> this is not for the faint of heart. This is not for your average gamer or your average consumer. What this is really meant for is someone who needs an insane amount of processing power, but in a way that you actually can build a gaming PC out of it. So with those 64 cores, you're actually getting pretty reasonable clocks. So it's like somewhere around like 2.9 gigahertz or so on all cores, and it will boost well up into four gigahertz when you're actually going on single core. But when you look at something like this, it's not really meant for, Look, you've got to be someone who's going to really take advantage of that many cores, that much memory. This is an incredibly high-end system. But the fact is, even at $3,000, that's a great deal compared to Team Blue, right? I mean, you're looking at Xeons, which are significantly more expensive. I'm very excited to see this thing when it goes on sale. Actually, I believe toward the end of this month. So that, my friends, is what AMD has here at CES 2020. Definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel for more CES content, as well as check out some of our other CES videos here and here somewhere. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go continue to be impressed because that's what happened when I came to the AMD booth today.